Smartphones, the 21st century drug. Smartphone addiction has escalated to the point that some of us are experiencing nomophobia, the fear of being separated from our phones even in important settings, such as meetings. Like opioid addiction, this addiction can be explained in terms of neuroscience. When we receive a notification on our phone, the neurons in the ventral tegmental area of our brain become excited. This excitation generates an electrical signal called an action potential, which travels to a neuron's presynaptic terminal in the area of our brain called the nucleus accumbens. The action potential leads to the opening of calcium channels. Calcium ions diffuse into the neuron, causing vesicles to fuse to the neuron's membrane and to release dopamine molecules, which diffuse into the synapse. Dopamine molecules bind to receptors on the postsynaptic neuron, causing sodium channels to open. Sodium ion diffusion causes the neuron to become more positive, but not enough to generate an action potential. Dopamine molecules left in the synapse are degraded by enzymes, reabsorbed by dopamine transporters, or diffuse away. This is what happens in a non-addicted smartphone user. In an addicted smartphone user, the neurons become excited, generating an action potential that travels to the nucleus accumbens in the same way. However, a study suggests that addicted users have fewer dopamine transporters. As a result, dopamine stays in the synapse longer and continues binding to receptors. Increased binding opens more sodium channels for a longer time, increasing sodium diffusion into the postsynaptic neuron, which becomes positive enough to generate an action potential. Dopamine is the basis of our smartphone addiction because it stimulates our seeking behavior. In this case, we seek likes, followers, and messages because they provide a rewarding feeling of validation and belonging. These rewarding interactions serve as positive reinforcement, strengthening our desire to seek out even more from our smartphones. In other words, our addiction is a vicious cycle, and it seems we'll never get enough of our precious phones. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Smartphone addiction is real. Keep watching to see the crazy things we'll do for our phones. Cell phone rage. Girl tries to poison grandma with pesticide. Meet Tatiana Lisa Nicole Johnson, a 17-year-old high schooler from Fayetteville, North Carolina. She's a dummy who tried to poison her grandma to death for revoking her cell phone privileges. You see, phone addict Johnson had been acting up, so, to punish her, 51-year-old grandma Galen Moody confiscated her celly. This didn't go down well at all. Johnson lost it and plotted her revenge. It was the Easter weekend and Grandma Moody was cooking up a pot of healthy collard greens. Johnson had other plans. She dumped poisons and insecticides into the mix. Moody had invited her friend over for the meal. The poison acted fast. She recalls going numb from the waist up. The two staggered out of the house. They tried to drive to the hospital but couldn't make it on their own. Moody and her friend eventually got to the ER and doctors suspected a virus was responsible for their symptoms. It wasn't until the next day when doctors realized the pair had been poisoned. Tatiana Johnson has been charged with two counts of attempted first degree murder. Being in North Carolina and over 16, she stands to spend many years in prison if she's convicted. Hey Tatiana, was it worth it? YOLO! Woman sprays mace in the face of the guy who dared to ask her to turn off her cell phone during a film. The AFI Film Festival screening of Mr. Turner at the Chinese Theater in Hollywood quickly turned Holly weird when a woman refused to turn off her phone during the screening, witnesses told local media. When the man, sitting behind the woman, tapped her on the shoulder to ask her to once again turn off her phone, the woman became belligerent, claiming the man had hit her. The woman then pulled out mace, spraying the man directly in the face. She then sat down and continued watching the movie for about 15 minutes before being escorted out by theater security. The LAPD's Hollywood division said they did not receive a 911 call in regards to the incident, and the victim is reportedly recovering well. For Tomo News in Hollywood, I'm Sasha Horn.
Firefighters use olive oil to free man with his head stuck in rocks. A Rhode Island man got his head stuck in rocks on Saturday while trying to reach for his dropped cell phone. The poor dude got trapped all the way up to his chest after he bent down to reach the phone on a rocky jetty in Narragansett. We can only imagine what that 911 call must have been like. <laughs> Firefighters tried for over two and a half hours to pull the guy out, but to no avail. Then they got a bright idea. They greased the man in olive oil and were then able to free him. He's in the hospital, but is said to be okay. A local fire captain told WJAR NBC 10 that they've had similar cases to this in the past involving animals, but never a human. Well, guess there's a first time for everything. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Russian woman suffers death by chocolate. A worker at a Russian chocolate factory got a golden ticket to the afterlife when she fell into a vat of the sticky brown stuff and died. Russian media reports said mom of two Svetlana Roslena dropped her cell phone into a vat of molten chocolate at the factory, about 80 miles northeast of Moscow. The 24-year-old then tried to fish her phone out, but instead fell right into the thick choco gloop. Other reports said the woman was pouring flour into the mix when she fell in. Regardless of the reason, she wound up inside the container, and that was the end of the poor woman as she was minced alive by the vat's mixers. Following the incident, staff at the factory said that only Svetlana's legs remained. Local residents said they later saw a police car and a hearse driving into the factory. The victim leaves behind a husband, Vladimir, and two young children. Russian police were investigating, but this looks to us like a clear case of death by chocolate. Pigeon caught smuggling phone into prison. A bird-brained smuggling mission was foiled, thanks to two eagle-eyed guards at a Colombian prison. The maximum security Combita prison is home to a slew of criminals, some of whom sneak in goods using high-tech methods, like messenger pigeons. But when one tried to get into the prison on Tuesday with fresh deliveries, it was intercepted by a pair of prison guards. In a video, the guards can be seen snipping a tiny harness strapped to the pigeon's back before setting the bird free. One of them then pulls up the goods the pigeon was transporting, a small mobile phone and USB stick inside a plastic baggie. Prison officials don't know which jailbird the actual bird was heading for, but they are now investigating. It's not the first time inmates have used pigeons to smuggle items. There were similar incidents in 2009 and 2011, and the poor birds are known to have been used as contraband carriers and drug mules in other prisons as well. 